60 degree threading tool guide. If you would like to download the STL files, they are listed in the description below. There's a link where you can download them and print this tool off yourself. This video is in two parts. The first part, we are going to show you how I designed the tool and printed it. And the second part, I'm going to show you how to sharpen a tool and use the guide to measure the actual tool. Okay, if you have not already, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. This video series is a series that I'm creating on 3D printed tools for the machine shop. They're designed to help apprentices complete their in-school projects. Thank you. Let's get started right now. The design. Also, after you finish designing, don't forget to save it as an STL so that you can put it into the 3D printing software. This is the 60 degree threading guide. It originally started out with just a, a flat piece and then I well, I want to add a piece on here for hanging. That changed eventually. The two bosses here are the most important part and also the most difficult to program. They're at 8 degrees to each other and 60 degrees included. Added three bosses here. The reason for these three bosses, so when I push the tool up against here, it slides in and it should fit up against these two angle pieces here. This cutout here is so when we flip the tool around, put the tool in, black it up, flip this around, that we can actually scribe the 60 degrees on. Students were having a difficult time doing that and getting it accurate, so this eliminates that. The only other thing that I added to this one is I put a 3 8 square in so that this jig here requires a 3 8 tool. 3D printing. The printer that I'm using is a Flash Forge Creator Pro. Okay, we saved our SolidWorks file into an STL file. Yes, we want it on the platform. So now we need to flip this around because this isn't the proper orientation. This orientation won't be very good for what we want to do here. So we're going to flip this guy around. This is the front of the machine here. So we'll rotate this guy around until it's flat. Okay, and I'm going to swing it around just so we get a better view or the view that we'd actually be holding the tool in. Well, that wasn't it. There we go, that's a better view. We're going to put it on the platform, put it in the center, pick the tools or pick the uh, plastic we want to machine it out of. We're going to machine it out of PLA. All the standards, I rarely ever change these guys. Save it. <clears throat> We can zoom in. Now I can go layer by layer. So I can also rotate around here. Get a better view here. Break it down layer by layer. Okay, so this is going to take one hour and 41 minutes. Tool layout. New apprentices seem to have a real problem with being able to handle the protractor and hold it and scribe at the same time and laying out the 60 degree in the center of the actual tool. By incorporating the peekaboo window, it eliminates that problem. Check to make sure we have the right size. Then I'm going to take some magic marker.
It's about time. Let's get on with grinding the tool. How's that look in there when I'm doing this? Can you see everything I'm doing? No, there's no It may look like I'm being really aggressive with it, but you see how I'm touching it? It's not hot at all. Um, constant moving back and forth helps, and you have to have a full tank of water, preferably cold water when you're doing this. Constant cooling. Grind a little, cool a little, grind a little, cool a little. This isn't finesse work at this point in time. I'm just trying to rough this material down to get to a, a shape that I can finish size. You wanna make sure there's no black or anything along those lines on here or any darking or browning because you anneal the tool if you do that. It just takes patience and time. Now you'll also notice where I keep my, my height on the wheel. Depends on the diameter of the wheel. Okay, so the higher up I go, the more clear or the more angle I'm gonna have here. The lower down I go, the less angle I'm gonna have. I'm aiming for eight degrees. I'm not even trying to get that yet. I'm just still in the roughing mode. See the tip still not developed yet, and I'm about a sixteenth away. Also, when I'm roughing, I'm just ramming it. I shouldn't say ramming it in, pushing it in. When I start doing my finesse grinding, you'll see me rotate in, and you'll also notice when I'm doing mine on both sides, there's only one surface. There's not a bunch of marks. So you're not seeing a bunch of starts and stops. Always firm, back and forth, one smooth finish. Now for our tool that we're making, it's important that this center is, or this point is in the center of the tool. That's why we have the jig, and that's where they're deriving their marks from. So I'm gonna start getting ready to finesse. If you take a look, the tool is in pretty good shape. I got a little bit more to go on this side and I'll start using the jig. I'll start using the jig to get my finished sizes. I can see here that I'm too far off on the bottom. I need to add more angle here. I'm still coming up to the edge. Still coming up to the edge here. Now another way, when you look from the back side, if you have this guy flat, if you look from the back side and you see the distance from here to here, you can tell which side has enough clearance. I need more clearance on this side and on this side. So if I want to increase clearance, I'm going to go up a small amount on the wheel. See how it's grinding more on the bottom? You don't want to go up too high because all of a sudden you're going to have too steep of an angle and you get the cliff effect. And a lot of people are saying, well, Ray, why don't you just make a jig or do this on the surface grinder? You cannot do this on the surface grinder because as a tool maker, you have to be able to make tools by hand. Now you need to be careful you don't burn the tip because a point acts as a heat sink 
and the tip is always going to heat up faster than the body so you got to especially when you're finishing you need to keep continuously quenching getting close Getting real close. There's a couple other tools that you can use to check it with as well. You can set this guy to 60 degrees. Make sure that guy goes in there. You can set it that way. You can also set this guy to eight degrees here. Eight degrees. Make sure that this guy lines up that you're getting your eight degrees in. That'll tell you you're getting your proper eight degrees that we're calling for on our drawing. Depending on what your lead of your angle is for your threading, that eight degrees is going to change. That looks pretty close, but to really tell, we're going to have to put that on the shadow graph. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, the good is this actually works and students like using it. I've seen a dramatic increase in the quality and precision that they're making their bits out of, so I'm very happy with that. The bad is the original prototype for this. I made too thin and I actually had to go back and make it about uh, another hundred thou thicker so it had some rigidity to it. The ugly. What I should have changed was the material I actually used. I would have used a better quality PLA, and I also would have reduced the step overs, which would have given a better finish or a more finer finish. I'm posting a link to the STL files so that you can print one of these off yourself. If you print one, please let me know. Send me a message. If you have any comments or suggestions on how to make this tool better or suggestions for other tools, please leave me a message in the comment section. And if you'd like to see other great videos, check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. Please like and subscribe, it's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Thanks for watching my video and have a great night.